Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Astro Imaging Channel. Uh, we have a special guest tonight, Terry Hancock from the Grand Mesa Observatory in Colorado. Uh, Terry is a, a great astrophotographer. He has lots of images and a few A-pods to throw in there as well. Uh, he's going to give us a walk around. He's going to show some of his images, give us a walk around from uh, in the Grand Mesa Observatory. Uh, it's a great site to do ast remote astrophotography, and uh, Terry's going to tell us all about it. And I think this is the first time we've actually got to see an observatory live as it's being operated. So, Terry, uh, if you're ready, uh, you can take it away. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Eric. Uh, it's a, a great pleasure to be here, uh, coming to you live uh, from Grand Mesa Observatory in Western Colorado. Um, the uh, Grand Mesa Observatory, uh, we're just over a couple of years old now, and um, the, uh, um, the idea of Grand Mesa Observatory initially was to do remote imaging for astrophotographers anywhere around the world. You know, we have a 16-foot um, by 32-foot uh, roll-off roof, I'm going to give you a bit of a walk around in a few minutes, but before I do that, um, I just want you to have a look at the screen and uh, and tell you a little bit about Grand Mesa Observatory and, and what we do. Um, we um, uh, for a start, you know, before I moved here, I was imaging from Michigan, and the um, the weather conditions, the um, uh, the light pollution was terrible, and uh, you know I, um, I I've been teaching astrophotography for quite a number of years. One of my students, uh, retired Colonel John Manta, um, was joking with me one day when we were doing a remote session um, about wanting to build an observatory in. Uh, Western Colorado, where he has property, uh, been in, in his family uh, for some time, and uh, so you know, I came down, had a look at the property, and a few weeks later, um, I made plans to move here, and uh, it really is a great spot, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that better? Okay, all right. So, anyway, um, the the idea. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So, yeah, the the idea of um, uh, Grand Mesa Observatory initially was just to provide. Uh, remote telescopes for astro images uh, like myself and um, astro images around the world that live in light polluted areas and um, and then John uh, came up with the idea that we should um, get involved in uh, public outreach and so uh, we became non-profit and now uh, all of the uh, the revenue that's generated from Grand Mesa Observatory uh, goes to after after the overheads uh, goes towards our educational and public outreach. Uh, we have quite a few different projects with public outreach. We do um, we do public viewing nights. Uh, we have uh, school uh, children come up and visit. We do special tours. Um, we uh, we go out to, to schools and we talk about astronomy. Uh, we have a science dome which is uh, almost completed, and once that's completed, that will be um, available to uh, students uh, anywhere around the world uh, that have a, uh, a science project um, that they want to do some maybe exoplanet research, photometry, uh, spectroscopy. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have a team of uh, students at the moment um, from the New York City University that are anxiously awaiting the completion of our 
science so that they can um, do some uh, exoplanet research. So uh, there are um, different um, uh, things that we offer. Uh, for example, we offer telescope hosting uh, where an individual uh, or a company we have a we have a company here that that has a uh, telescope and they they use it for private research. Um, and uh, uh, at the moment we don't have any uh, space available, but when we do, uh, we charge seven hundred dollars a month uh, for um, telescope hosting. Uh, that means you know you, the customer has to provide his telescope and mount uh, and gear, and we provide uh, internet with the 60 megabyte down and 60 meg up, and we include five hours of maintenance each month. And so you know I think it's a pretty good deal. Uh, we also do uh, private rental. Um, uh, an individual is who's in experience with astrophotography uh, can actually hire one of our telescopes, um, or uh, he can book custom data set, um, and I will do the uh, image capturing and provide the uh, customer mm -hmm. with the um, uh, with the calibrated data. Uh, yes. Okay, is that better? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All righty. Okay, so I will shoot the custom data sets to the customer's needs. And then we will provide the data um, in the form of uh, calibration, calibrated da uh, darks, uh, bias and flats, and light frames. Then we have subscription services. Uh, we have a, um, a setup where um, we have a Google poll uh, every month, and uh, the um, the customer uh, picks um, several images from from a list, and we have the Google poll at the end of the month, and then we we pick the most popular objects to shoot, and um, so that's our subscription services. And at the moment, we have uh, we have two telescopes to choose from. We have System One, which is the Takahashi One Thirty. Um, and we have a Skywatcher 150, um, uh, 150 millimeter refractor. Um, they're both available um, with our uh, subscriptions at the moment. There's several more coming online very soon. I um, I also wanted to show you the. Um, I don't know if you can see that on the screen now, uh, Tolga and Eric, but this is the Astro Haven uh, dome that belongs to um, the uh, Air Force Academy, uh, and it's part of their Falcon Telescope Network. They have um, 12 telescopes like this around the world, and we are honored to have one here at Grand Mesa Observatory it has a 20 inch um, telescope uh, in it and this is used for ex ex exoplanet research um, and it's a, it's a collaboration between the um, Air Force Academy and uh, the CMU Colorado Mesa University uh, they have um, Students that use this for uh, exoplanet transits and uh, again things like photometry and spectroscopy and and so on. Um, so now I uh, I'm going to uh, try and give you a bit of a walk around. 
using my phone inside the observatory um, and I don't know if you can see me now. Hey, can you tell me swap over now to my my picture or my the light cam on my phone? Uh, Terry, we just lost your video feed. Oh, hang on. Uh, oh, you're back. Well, am you're I back. back now? Yep, we got you. Go ahead. Okay, so I want to just walk around the observatory and show you what we got happening in here. I'm going to show you the scope that we've got. This is a um, Sky Watcher 150 Esprit. Great telescope and we have we're testing this for um, Sky Watcher Telescope USA and um, it really does a great job. We're we're using on this one a QHY 163 uh, monochrome camera and uh, we also have on this rig uh, another um, QHY 367 uh, with a little 135 millimeter uh, Rockinon lens and pretty soon we're going to be offering this as a package this is currently uh, system 2 uh, on our subscription and for an extra 50 bucks a month you can have all the data uh, from the Rockinon and uh, you know some of you may have seen some of the excellent images that this camera and, and lens is uh, provided um, this is our, our latest addition uh, to Grand Mesa Observatory. Uh, we recently bought this plane wave, 12.5 inch uh, TDK. I hope the light from the flat panels isn't affecting too much. Uh, but uh, this is an F8 uh, 2541 millimeter telescope, and this is very soon to be released as. Uh, our, on our subscription uh, for System 3. Uh, we're very uh, honoured and proud to be using uh, Warren Keller's uh, ATIC 11000 monochrome camera on this. Uh, Warren wasn't using it, so he um, he allowed us to use it on, on the plane mode. So uh, I've been testing this for the last month or so and I'm getting some really great results and this is going to be uh, system three on our subscription and it's probably going to be live from the 1st of October. Okay, so we're going to move over here to um, the Takahashi uh, FSQ-130. Uh, this is system one and you know this has uh, really provided some great images for any of you that have been following my uh, photos um, uh, you can probably tell that I favor using this than anything else but um, yeah it's uh, one of my favorites it's like the Skywatch you know that's another favorite of mine but this one at the moment has got a um, the QHY 367 uh, full frame CMOS. Um, you're probably wondering why, yes, it's a one shot color camera. Why have we got a filter wheel uh, attached to it? Well, yes, it, it's uh, providing some really good results in narrowband. Um, and uh, well, I'll try and share some new uh, narrowband photos with this telescope in the next day or two. Uh, on this rig we also have the William Optic rig pack. We are doing some testing for William Optic as well. Um, this is a little a little um, 250 millimetre F4.9 um, APO refractor and it's 
giving us some really great results. I'm using this with the QHY 16200A, uh, which is a monochrome uh, CCD camera, has a chip, uh, APS8, uh, I think it is, uh, and it's got a 21 by 27 millimeter um, sensor, and uh, you know, it's, um, it's a monochrome camera, and um, what I like about this particular rig is we can do some really wide field imaging in monochrome um, and you know, including narrowband. And again, we're going to be offering this uh, on subscription uh, uh, system one uh, for an extra 70 bucks a month. Uh, so for 170 bucks a month, you can get uh, two sets of data uh, from the Takahashi 130 and two sets of data from the uh, from the William Optic webcam. Uh, basically, you know, we're going to be shooting the same object with these, so you'll get a fairly close up view with the 130, and you'll get a wide field uh, image of the same object each month. But um, again, I'm going to be posting some images from this setup in the next couple of days. Uh, uh, Terry, can I ask a couple of questions? Yes, sure. How do you decide on the target for each of the uh, setups? Okay, we have a Google poll. Uh, each month we uh, select a list of between six to ten objects that are currently visible that are suitable for that particular telescope. You know, we look at things like the image scale and the size of the object we keep. Uh, six to ten objects, and then uh, our subscribers pick their favourites out of that list. And then at the uh, at the end of the month, uh, we uh, we have a vote and we uh, we pick the most popular uh, selection. And so you know the following month, that's what I'll I'll be shooting is the most popular target that the subscribers want. And what's the field of view approximately of the, uh, the, the 130 and then the second setup? Uh, I've got that written down. I'll have to answer your question in a few minutes. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So um, the, um, then we move to this one here, which is a quite an unusual setup. Uh, and this is a... Uh, Twin set of Takahashi uh, E180 Exelon, and um, we have them mounted on my very ancient but still very well performing uh, Paramount GT1100S. Um, and on here we have two full frame cameras. Uh, we got this top one here is a QHY11. Uh, which has the 24mm uh, uh, by 36mm ST11000 uh, and one uh, sensor TCB. Uh, this is monochrome, so the idea is uh, that we will be capturing uh, narrowband uh, with this camera, and then here we have a QHY367 one shot color camera. So, um, if anyone, uh, uh, you know, you can have a look on, on my um, my Flickr pages at several images that I've uh, captured with this uh, setup. I, I'm still not 100% happy with the uh, the setup. I've had some issues with collimation on one of the scopes, but hopefully uh, this is going to be ready uh, for subscription in the next month or so. Terry, I, I have a question. Yes. Do both cam do both cameras image at the same time? And Correct. if they do, are are you dithering? And does that affect the other camera? Uh, no, no, not at all. No, I'm I'm running Maxim DL six, uh, and so when I'm capturing, you know, I have to uh, open up uh, two two sets of two sets of windows. In Maxim, so there's 
uh, I had Maxim running twice. And um, all of the, uh, when the images are downloaded, uh, they all get downloaded to our uh, NAS drive. Now, this is an, an amazing moment. This was a pan, but uh, as you can see now, uh, the roof is opening. Uh, the I was going to uh, do this manually, but the uh, uh, the roof, which is uh, uh, manufactured, or the 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 roof system, the control system, is manufactured by Skyroof, uh, an interactive astronomy. Uh, any of you know Jim Collins, uh, really great vendor, um, and the roof opens automatically. Uh, just after sunset, providing the the skies are clear, and uh, it will automatically close uh, at uh, at dawn before dawn. And of course, if it gets cloudy, uh, the telescopes have to pass, and the roof will automatically close. Um, as you can see around the the walls, we've got all these flat panels here. Uh, protruding our flats um, and yeah just going back to the uh, um, did I answer your question on um, on shooting uh, the, with the two telescopes at the same time I'm not sure I was wondering like they they are both imaging at the same time correct yes and and um, if Dithering occurs, and would the other camera be imaging as well? Any, I'm not doing. You're not dithering. Any. Okay, okay. So they're just they're just imaging, and one and one is responsible for guiding, and the other one follows passively. Yeah. So well, here's the um, here's the guide scope that I'm using a a little uh, QHY uh, guide scope, um, and you know both both of these um both of these telescopes are mounted onto the Robin Cassidy uh, parallel um, setup, and um, you know they've been—I've calibrated them so that they're they're both pointing at exactly the same object. With the the spike pointing the same direction. Uh, so when you get your um, when you get your data, you're going to get two sets of data. Uh, the um, uh, the data from the the 367, uh, you'll get light frames, you'll get dark um, bias and flat, and then you'll get a set of data uh, from the QSY11, including your flat, dark, and bias. Um, and it's up to the client, of course, to do the registration in fixed inside or whatever you want to use. Um, but, uh, but you're there. Okay, so there was a, Thank you. there was a, um, um, I don't know. Uh, there was a question regarding the, the field of view. Um, and I Yeah, there we go. Yeah, the, um, the field of view with the 130 is 127 by 190 arc minutes. I think that was my earlier, uh, someone had the earlier session. Okay, so moving forward, right, I want to show you the, the new William Optic um, 12 inch. Uh, with the Python, and that we are testing uh, for William Optic. Um, this is basically a GSO uh, telescope, RC telescope, which is um, you know, uh, sold uh, under license by several other resellers. Uh, the thing that I like about the... We're oh, having a little bit of difficulty hearing you, Terry. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, the thing that I like about the the William Optics right. twelve inch RC is that they have uh, supplied their own autofocuser 
and their own field flattener. And I can tell you now that we are getting some really great results with this setup. And again, we are using this with another uh, QHY uh, 16200, and, um, which is a monochrome camera. And, and so, yeah. Um, here we have a, uh, a telescope which is um, uh, owned by Penny out of Denver. They, uh, they, uh, we host that telescope for them. Okay, I'm going to walk outside now and I'm going to show you the outside of the observatory. The, um, Terry, down here, Terry can, can you hear me? Yes. How many piers do you have in the, uh, the big observatory house? Uh, we have six piers. And are they all filled? Uh, at the moment, yes. Yeah, if, if, if you or anyone else is interested in uh, looking at hosting, uh, then I would suggest you drop me a line at terry at grandmesaobservatory.com and, you know, we might be able to put you on the wait list. Um, so, yeah, we'd be very interested to talk to you. Um, outside here, actually, I just want to show you the system. It's something that we set up only a few days ago. This is a, um, a 60 inch widescreen TV that we uh, set up. Uh, we had this thing for a special event that we had a few days ago. On here, I can do live streaming. You know, if I'm shooting a galaxy, uh, I can, you know, put that up on the widescreen TV for when we're doing a, um, uh, a um, public event or a private event. And I'm just walking up here to the the science dome, uh, which is a Podmax made in Canada by Skyshed. And um, I'm hoping that this will be um, commissioned in a few weeks' time. We still have to put the finishing touches to it. And I don't know if you can see him here or not very well, but this has got a um, a 16 inch um, AstroTech uh, Ricky Crichton in it, and um, it's on a Paramount ME, and uh, this one is going to be used specifically for uh, scientific research by. A group of students, um, mainly headed from uh, New York City University, and now will be uh, using this for exoplanet transits and research, photometry and spectroscopy. Um, so, yeah. This is a 12 foot diameter dome, and the, um, uh, the dome rotates. Obviously, and it has a, a slot here. The telescope will, uh, and the slot synchronize with the, uh, the telescope, um, as it's uh, moving. As you can see, we have a beautiful sunset at Grand Mesa Observatory. And, um, I would show you inside the, uh, the Air Force Dome, uh, but we tried earlier this afternoon and the reception was pretty bad, so unfortunately we're going to have to skip that, but um, the uh, the telescope that's in there is a, a 20 inch uh, official Stel Air uh, Stellaris and, um, uh, and it's a um, collaboration between the, the Air Force and the um, the Colorado Mesa University, uh, but the Air Force has got uh, 12 of these um, around the globe, so. Okay, so um, there goes our tour. Uh, I wanted to show you a few more pictures 
uh, for uh, any of you that are interested in um, in looking at a new product by QHY, they're, they're um, uh, soon to be releasing the uh, QHY 600. And yeah, I can't wait to be testing that. You know, I've been beta testing uh, QHY CCD cameras now for about eight uh, years, and we're we are actually uh, Grand Mesa Observatory is now a uh, testing station for QHY. You can see we have this um, plaque on the wall, and we're very proud to have that. And so, yeah, now I think I want to. Uh, of this um, new camera for anybody that might be interested. I've got the inspector from um, from Dr. Terry, we can't, we can't oh, hear we've lost anymore. your voice again, Terry. Sorry about that. Yes. Okay. So, uh, can you see the picture on the screen? Uh, yes, we can see the picture on the screen. Go ahead. Okay, so yeah, here's a picture of the um, uh, of the new QHY 600, and for anyone that doesn't know, it's a, a 24 millimeter by 36 millimeter uh, monochrome CMOS, and you know there are uh, there are other CMOS sensors available, but this one is um, very affordable uh, for most people. Um, and um, this should be, from what I'm hearing, uh, it should be the first batch should be shipped um, at the the end of this month um, to try and avoid the uh, the U.S. tariffs. This is mounted to the uh, the QHY um, version three color filter wheel. Uh, in order to be able to use this camera, you have to order the large um, version three uh, filter wheel. what that one is okay um, yeah the I really don't have a, a lot of information on this camera yet I believe the um, camera will be available in the photographic and the professional version and the main differences from what I understand is the professional version will have um, uh, two Ethernet ports on the back. The uh, photographic version will just have the one, and there's going to be uh, quite a difference in price. Um, okay, so um, oh, I've got a couple of pictures I wanted to show you of the um, uh, the scope inside the, the Air Force Observatory. And it's using a um, uh, an Apogee uh, monochrome CCD, complete with a, a bunch of um, uh, photo uh, photo. Um, uh, uh, Terry, photo could you photo. move your your phone closer? Okay. Is that better? Yeah, well, that's much better. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Okay, so um, that's about it from from me here at Grand Mesa Observatory. Do we have any? Uh, have any questions for the viewers? Uh, I have a couple of questions. You were mentioning what the subscription programs were. I'm not sure I caught all of that. Could you kind of review it briefly? Sure, yes. Okay, the uh, subscription at the moment is available on System 1 
uh, which is the Takahashi 130, uh, and System 2, which is the Skywatcher 150, and either one, and uh, even the System 3, which is going to be the plane wave, they will all be available for uh, $100 a month each. Um, that's a um, uh, recurring uh, PayPal debit, which can be cancelled at any time. Um, uh, soon that we're going, to, and that includes uh, two objects each month. Um, and and if we get better weather, then you know I'll try and increase that to three objects. Um, we're also going to be uh, offering uh, the Red Cat 250 millimeter monochrome CCD for an extra seventy dollars a month if you select uh, System One. So you'll you'll end up getting two sets of data. Uh, from the Takahashi 130 and two sets of data uh, from the Red Cat. And with the Skywatcher 150, again, that's $100 a month. Uh, if you want to subscribe for the additional uh, Rockin' On with the QHY 367, uh, that will be an additional $50 a month. The reason why uh, that one is is lower cost is that one uh, we will only have uh, one shot color uh, imagery available from that rock and all. we're just using a, a one shot color camera with it uh, can you tell us how many uh, imaging nights that you generally get in a year and what kind of scene conditions do you have well you know up until this year uh, i would have said it was around about 200 uh, but unfortunately, this year has been a terrible year. I think it's been the same everywhere across the United States. It's not been any different here. Uh, you know, I believe it was the uh, wettest winter on record. Um, and, you know, the we're now into the monsoon season. Um, we're going to be down exact numbers I cannot give you, but we're definitely going to be down on last year's number for clear nights. It's been a bit disappointing, but like I said, you know, it's, it's the same everywhere. From what I'm hearing, anyway. Terry, we've got one question from YouTube. It was regarding the, uh, the QHY camera. They're wondering uh, what model it is, how many megapixels, and what is the micron size? In okay, which one? Uh, the last one that you were showing. Okay, the, um, the last one uh, that I was showing, um, let me just bring up the, I don't know if I can share this or not. The, um, the camera is uh, 60 megapixel and it is, um, uh, the sensor size uh, is 24 millimeters by 36 millimeters. It, the pixel size uh, is 3.76 by 3.76 UN and it's a backlit, back illuminated sensor and it's also 16 bit okay hope that answers the question uh thank you i hope it does that was just that just came up in youtube thank you okay do we have anything else? Uh, no, I, I think we covered it. Listen, thank you very much for your presentation. I don't know, we have any more questions for Terry from YouTube or uh, from people on, in the room? No, no questions that I can see. Well, that was, that was just excellent. It makes me, uh, makes me think about subscribing to your service out there. I'd be interested, do you post a list of targets? Uh, Especially for the wide field, but I just uh, what was that? Do I host the list of targets? Uh, yes. It's, so, if someone were interested, could they go online and say these are the targets uh, that we've imaged? Uh, we currently only make them available for our subscribers, but I don't see any reason why we can't make 
them available for potential subscribers. You know, that's a that's a very good question. You know, I I I, um, I will um, have a, um, a look into that system and get that added to our website. And if someone subscribes to one of your plans, can they get the historic information as well? Is that available? Um, as, as far as um, uh, legacy data, earlier objects that we've captured, is that what you mean? No, if they subscribe now, can they go back and look at some of the data from the earlier part? Like the earlier part oh, of the no. we, we only make the, um, if someone subscribes for uh, beginning um, uh, September, uh, then they will only uh, be entitled to um, data from September uh, and onward, of course. Uh, but if someone wants the uh, some of the earlier targets that we have captured, uh, we have what we call legacy data available uh, for $50 a set. Okay, yeah, I see you have a couple like uh, Rolo Fugus, which is very interesting to me because I think I don't, can't quite see it from where I am. So I think, oh. that's, I think that's about it. Uh, Thank you very much for coming on, Terry. Really an interesting presentation. Uh, you'll probably get some phone calls from, from someone online. And uh, Tolga, I think we're all set. Do you want to end the session? Uh, yeah, so just uh, thanks for everybody for uh, logging in. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get the notifications for new videos. Uh, and we'll be back next Sunday. Hamza is coming back. He's going to be talking about uh, prison again. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll uh, see you guys next week. And good night. Good night, everyone.